Ezekiel chapter number 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, chapter after chapter, the word of God, inspiration, because we're going to see something else in this chapter. We're not going to see the word of God. Son of man prophesied against the prophets of Israel that prophesied. And say thou unto them that prophesied out of their own heart. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Chapter 13, we're going to see two prophets. We're going to see one that has the word of the Lord, and we're going to see one that has his own heart speaking. Now, I was dealing with a guy last night who recently got saved in prison, and I had to show him the errors of his Bible. And I thank the Lord he took it with uh, the love of God that showed him that places in the Bible where Jesus Christ is missing where baptism is the salvation and not belief and he came down what's the difference is it one is of God and one is of man and that's what we're seeing in Ezekiel chapter 13 tonight just because a man speaks thus saith the Lord he may not be speaking of the Lord he may be speaking of his own heart he may not even be speaking of Satan I mean, for some people, they think the ministry, you know, it's an easy job and easy money. And, and people who just take care of you and send you all kinds of cash and checks and all that. And, yeah, you see some of these people, and they, you know what? It is easy money. But they're not speaking from God. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There is no promise of a full pocketbook for a Christian today. So we see one that, and the word of the Lord came unto me, and we see that out of their own hearts. That's the difference. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets. Those are the ones that prophesied out of their own heart. God calls them fools. Psalm says that a fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Uh oh. He links, them, he links the foolish prophets with those that are atheists in heart. Get the heart condition. Know the heart condition. That will tell you who they are. And Jesus said, Wherefore by their fruits you should know them. For out of the heart, uh, the abundance of man speaketh, I believe it said. The heart will tell the true nature of who they are. And what's their heart say? It says they're foolish. Read the book of Proverbs. Go through our study of the book of Proverbs about the fool. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't listen to God. That followeth their own spirit. Uh-oh. Not the Holy Spirit. Their spirit. And have seen nothing. So when I have a dream, I have a dream. Did you really have a dream? When you deny the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, what spirit did you speak of? Oh, I saw what was in your heart. Everything that followed you. Burning buildings. Old Israel. Thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. And I looked under the commentary of this verse here and found some interesting remarks. He had not grown up into the gaps. Neither had made up a hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They were no protection. They just kept prophesying. We saw in the last chapter last night uh, that God was angry with them. He said, they're saying, well, you know, build your houses. It's going to happen a long, long time. So settle in. And God said, no, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen now. Paul had to write Timothy about men who were saying that the resurrection's already gone past. You missed it. Now, foxes and deserts, I looked up, and there are foxes and deserts. 
In fact, like there, there's a desert fox. Now, why he would call him fox in the desert would be an interesting study if you want to do it out. Uh, they told Jesus one time, get out of here. Herod's going to get you. He says, go tell that fox. I know one thing in the Bible, foxes are an enemy to the uh, uh, the vineyards. There's something about a fox when he brushes up against the, the grapes or the vine, they do damage. The young fox. The foxes are a pretty much interesting study if you want to take that out. We're going uh, we're going chapter by chapter. But there is no protection of these prophets for the people. Matter of fact, according to chapter 12, 27, 28, they're going to bring the destruction instantly and now. They have seen vanity. And that's nothing. Emptiness. God created the earth not in vain. God created this earth for his purpose. Now he may have created Mars, uh, universe, uh, Uranus, and Pluto, and uh, Jupiter vain. There's nothing there. But there was something here on this earth. And there's been something on this earth. I'm not what I'm saying is those planets are empty. They're dead. The earth is not. There's nothing to and lying divination. Well, John 8 44 says the author and the finisher of lies is Satan. Not only is he the liar, he is the father of the lies. The liar. So now we see Satan step into verse thir chapter 13. We have the word of the Lord and we have the lying of Satan. That's the difference. And that's what I showed that guy last night in prison with his Bible. And so how neaky deaky that they did it that they put brackets. You know, what's those brackets? I said, well, the Bible has parentheses. A parenthesis in the Bible means here's some extra information that you need to know. I said, in your Bible, the brackets mean you don't need to read this. Matter of fact, if you like with the bracket, you can erase it out of your Bible. Then we went over the first John. They just completely erased Jesus as the word. So we're seeing the word of God and we're seeing the word of the devil. And those that have the modern Bibles are of these prophets that prophesy a lie of their own heart, of their own ambitions, being foolish with their own spirit, doing destruction to the people. And the Lord has not sent them. But they go in the name of the Lord. And guy, another guy asked me about Daytona, the religious state of Daytona. I said, there's a church in every every place where I've turned, there's a, there's a church on the street. And the atmosphere of what the Daytona Beach is, it's dead. Absolutely dead. But they're standing in the pulpits and whenever they meet, go save the Lord. And, Lion. Like the modern Bibles. They have changed what Jesus said. They have changed what God has said. They have changed what the prophets said. They had eliminated. They had added. They footnoted it. And they made others to hope that they would confirm the word. And we saw that in 12, 27, 28. Others were, yeah, okay, build in, settle in. It's not going to happen in our time. There are Religious denominations right now telling you that there is no rapture. We're going to bring the kingdom in, and then when we bring the kingdom in, then Jesus Christ will show us up, will show up and pat us on the back and take care of us. There are some out there. We're going to, the church will go through the tribulation, stock up on king goods. That's a lie. That is not what God says. And thousands, if not millions, have fallen for that. And they would want the confirmation of their word out of their pulpit or whatever they have to be true. Because they're not. They're lying. And they will be found liars. They will be found guilty before God, whether saved or lost, whether judgment they stand. 
be worse to be saved and stand at that judgment that you lied about what God told you and I've been lied to many times by a man behind the pulpit have you not seen a vain vision a nothing vision it's almost like being blind And have ye not spoken a lie in divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken. You know, those who listen to this right now, you may have a man or a woman, which is a violation of the scriptures, get up to wherever they do before your whatever kind of assembly you got. Get up there with a Bible, if you want to call it a Bible, or magazine, or whatever you, you have. And God said, and you need to check them out because God may be in heaven saying, uh, I have not spoken to you. And Corinthians tells us in, in 2 Corinthians that Satan has his ministers. And I read that to one of the guys last night. And I read about Joyce. A new Christian who would listen to her. And I said, you know what? What do you do when the Bible says a woman is not to assert authority over a man? Well, what if she's right? I said, she's violating the Bible. You think God's going to bless what he told you not to do? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because he has spoken vanity, nothing. Imagine sitting under this guy for 30, 45 60 minutes, if not more, and whatever he says, God says, it's nothing. It's a waste of time. It's hot air. And you go week after week after week after week after week, and to God, it's nothing. And seen lies. Does that say here? Does that say seen? There is something about that person's life that you see and not only hear, but see lies. Hearing and seeing eyes and ears. Let me read something about that in chapter 12 last night. Having eyes, they, they see not. Having ears, they hear not. But this guy, and in his lives, and in his walk, and in his conduct, and what he does, and what you see, is a lie, and you still follow him. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. God's going to separate them from those that are true believers. Where? Into the lake of fire with burning forever. Neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel. Now we're talking about Jews. We're in the Old Testament. These are probably Jewish people. And God says, I'm not going to write their heritage. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. So they're going to leave the land. And we saw some of, uh, in chapter 12 that were named. I believe it was 25 of them at least. God says, you, you know, this is your culture. No, I'm going to bring you to the border of Israel. I'm going to kill you there. And you're not coming back in the land. Ever. Remember, the land of Israel is the Jews' heaven. They're looking for a piece of physical ground, acreage. The new earth will be theirs in eternity. Shall enter into the land of Israel, ye shall know that I am the Lord. And we talked about that last night in chapter 12. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. There's a wrong time to find out that I am the Lord, and there's a right time to find out I am the Lord. This is the wrong time. This is too late. This would be a repentance that I got caught, not a repentance of heart. 
You're going to see people at the great white throne judgment. You're going to witness. They're going to repent all their heart out. Because they got caught. Repentance is now. Because ye, because even because they have seduced my people. That's a good word there. Sedative. There was a Simon, there was a, there was a, a sorcerer named Simon in the book of Acts. He was seducing the people. Making them out someone that he wasn't. And he had the people under his control that he could do things that he couldn't do. Saying peace. Oh, they're saying that all over the world today. In the 60s, in the 70s, peace, peace, peace. And there was no peace. There was no peace. And what was the seduction of America in the, in the 50s, in the 60s, and the 70s? Dope. Marijuana. Drugs of all different sizes, colors, and whatever you wanted to do and how you wanted to do it. And they are in the White House today. They are in Capitol Hill today. And God says they are liars. How's that? Those that are Woodstock are right now in office. Why do you think marijuana has become legalized? They were smoking it as, as teenagers. Saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Now, untempered mortar is a mortar that is not made for strength. It's not properly made. It, it could be missing ingredients. It could have been hastily made. It could have been not the right type. Say unto them that dogged it with untempered mortar. Let's just get the job done. Let's cut the corners because of price. Let's cut the corners for time. Let's cut the corners so more money will go in my pocket. Whatever it would be. That it should fall. Well, you don't want a wall to fall. But they're building a wall for protection. And they think it's going to stand... And it doesn't. And this would be the guy that builds his house on the sand. And when the storms come, I believe it says utter destruction, loss. Because they didn't build it on the foundation. They didn't build it by God. They did not build it by the word. Because Jesus said, he that doeth my sayings is like a man that builds his house on a foundation. The rock. Him that doesn't do my saying is him that builds his house on the sand. And we're talking about the word of God here or we're talking about the word of Satan. These that build their wall is building their wall on sand on Satan. And there shall be an overflowing shower, a big storm. And ye, O great hailstone, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rend it. Revelation 11, 19 and 16, 21. You do know that Jesus Christ quoted from Ezekiel 13 when he gave the foundation of those that do what God says to do. Overflowing showers, a storm, the winds. Lo, when the wall falleth, shall it not be said unto you, where is the Doubling wherewith he hath dobbed it. Where is it? Where is the residue? Where is what's left over? Where is the can? We want to see what you did, how you did it, and what you used to do it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. Didn't Jesus say, Peace be still to the wind? Isn't he the author of the weather? So when Jesus spoke about that man building his house on the foundation, or that man building his house upon the sand, he's taking it out of Ezekiel 13 about the false prophets and their protection. Overflowing shower in my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. And you find that in Revelation, the hailstone. So will I break down the wall that ye have dogged it, 
with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And he's talking about the city walls of Jerusalem. And when Nehemiah, no, excuse me. Ne yeah, when Nehemiah takes a walk and looks at the damage of the walls, he says he gets to this one point, he says he couldn't even go any further. Him or his ass that he was writing. He says there was just so much debris all around, he says I had to stop and turn around and go back. Thus will I accomplish my wrath, and we saw that in chapter 12, 28. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, upon them that daubed it with untempted mortar. And will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. Now why is God so angry? What has angered God so much? Before we go any further. God told Jeremiah to preach during a certain period. And he's still preaching while Ezekiel's writing what he's writing. Jeremiah told him that God told him that God was going to do this. If they didn't get right, they didn't repent. And God has already sent one Babylonian army into the land. Ezekiel's carried off into Babylonia. He's preaching to the Babylonian people and to the Jews in Babylonia. And none of the Jews have gotten right. That's what's angered God. What Jeremiah has said so far has happened has happened about the army. And they have not repented. Now God has two men out of the mouth of two or three. He's got one in he's got one in Jer uh, Jeremiah. He's got one in Jerusalem and he's got one in Babylonia and they're both preaching and three times God gives them the opportunity to get right and they don't. And the walls do come down and they come down and they stay down for over 70 years. They don't get right. And I've had someone personally, I pray for that God would do things in their life so that they would repent. And I've seen it. I've seen the walls come down. I've seen destruction and they come out of it against God. Even so stupid thing to say, you know, that they believe in evolution. And sometimes, you know, you just got to pray for that person. And you just got to move on and find somebody who will build their wall upon the rock. You're going to have many people building their walls on the sand. Do what you can. You pray what you can. And you move on. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And, there, and when you do that, there's two responses. They're going to build a wall that's going to stand, or they're going to build a wall that's going to have utter destruction. And there's nothing you can do. You can just pray, and that's it. Don't you think Ezekiel and Jeremiah, I mean, just together, they're just praying to God in between the chapters, in between the verses that we're reading. Don't you think that they're praying to God for the people? I think they are. Now, I'm not saying give up on prayer. I'm not saying give up on the person. I'm not saying give up on the people, but read John chapter 3. They rather do evil than good. To wit, the, uh, the prophets of Israel which prophesied concerning Jerusalem, which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. There's coming two Babylonian armies attacks, and the last one's going to destroy. And it did. Likewise, the Son of Man, thou Son of Man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophet. Now, we're going to get something here that's really, really weird. We've been talking about men. Now we're going to move to the women. There are women radio preachers and television preachers. We're with radio and television in Ezekiel's time. I'm trying to bring it up to date for you.
You think having a woman tell you what the Bible says is something new? It's 594 B.C. Now we're going to see the women. Set thy face against the doors of thy people, Jewish women, which prophesied out of their own heart. Again, like the men. Verse 2. And prophesied thou against them. That's exactly what I did last night. And I haven't read chapter 13 yet. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sold pillows to all armholes. Don't even ask me. And make kerchiefs upon the heads of every stature to hunt souls. I have no idea. Stature, that's something tall. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? Jews. Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Something with death. Now notice we're in chapter 13 of verse 18, 666. And will ye pollute me, God, among my people? For the handfuls of barley and pieces of bread. Now I, I don't know if this has anything for the to the to the cakes of the Queen of Heaven, but something about they're paying these women with barley and bread. And the last thing you read about with Jeremiah being in prison is the bread has gone. They're taking their bread and they're we know they're giving it to the Queen of Heaven. We read that. But they're taking the bread that God has given it to them and giving it to false preachers and teachers, men and women, not to God. To slay the souls that should not die. They're murdering. Souls. Satan is using women that are preaching God, that are false, and the souls of the people are being killed. That were not supposed to die. To save the souls alive that should not live. Those that are supposed to be getting capital punishment, they are keeping them alive. Murderers and adulterers according to the law. Oh, disobedient children were to be stoned. Those they're keeping alive. What, where do you find it? Give us Barabbas and crucify Christ. They're calling good evil and evil good. By your lying to my people, you can say that Christian. You listen to these false preachers at the pulpit, on the television, on the radio. You, you listen to their lie. You are lying to my people that hear your lie. And the people are falling for it. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillow. I have no idea. I know women have certain blouses on. They got pads on the shoulders. But this says armholes. I don't know why you would put a pillow on an armhole. I know what a kerchief is. I've seen women wear kerchiefs, but that's not what it says. It says every stature. Wherewith ye that hunt the souls to make them fly. I am totally out now. It has to do something with dead. Casper the friendly ghost. I have no idea. But this is is this why they put sheets on goats? Goats. Oh boy, ghosts. This is this why in the cartoons you see ghosts look like sheep? 
I don't know. This is weird. And I will tear them from your arms. The armhole. Instead of deodorant, they're putting pillows. I have no idea. And will let the souls go. The souls that ye hunt to make them fly. They are dying. And God says, I'm just going to let them go. You can't keep them. I want to say something. I don't know if I can dare say it or I just, just should shut up. But there's something weird going on here. Something about dying soul. That these people have some, the women have some kind of power in what they're making and what they're sowing. Like a dream catcher of the Indians. You better be careful. You better look up what you hang over your bed, hang over your your car, wherever you what you have in your house. You better find the origin of what you're doing, and if it's against God, you need to get rid of it. Your kerchief also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, set them free. They shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord speaking to the women prophets. That's a weird three verses. Because with lies ye have made your heart. Oh, excuse me. Because, of, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. Now when I told that guy last night the truth. You know he was sad. I thought I was doing good. Whom I have not made sad. Oh, there are some people that God has made happy, but these people are made worse. They have countered act what God had done. They have joy, but now they're sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked. They made the happy. I mean they made the wicked happy. But they made the righteous sad. That he should not return from his wicked way. There is no repentance of these women that are false prophets. They don't get right. By promising him life. Religions will offer you life by any way they can by their teaching. And there is no true repentance. And they are lying about their way of salvation. They are lying about uh, purgatory. They are lying about, you know, Jesus is not coming. They are lying about there is no hell. They are lying about, oh, you, when you die, there is no, you just die and they are lying. Therefore you shall see no more vanity. You're not going to get no vanity. That's it. How can you have no more vanity when vanity is nothing? Nor divine division. Divination. Nor divine, div oh boy. divine divination. God's going to shut you up. For I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am the Lord you know when God shuts up all these liar, lying divinators he'll shut them up at the great white throne judgment that will be the end he says every liar will have his part in the lake that burneth with fire Revelation 20 and 21 God's going to shut these people down but Rest assured, be wise that Ezekiel 13 says that there are men and there are women. They are preaching from their hearts, not God. They are both liars. They both say, thus saith the Lord, and they are lying because God says, I have not spoken to them. 
and the women are protecting the men that are guilty and they are destroying those that are righteous. So Jezebel, who had Avon and lip gloss and paint in her face, went after a man of God and broke him. After that, Elijah, ne yeah, Elijah never got right after that. He went into a depression mode that you know he could he could come out. Why does not God want women to teach over? Maybe Ezekiel thirteen may be one of the reasons. They go far and above the men problems. I don't know. We just read the black and white. 